Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the DigBus Aviation flight crew, Captain Seth and I would like to thank you for your patience during this short delay. We will be completing some important maintenance on our aircraft and we'll be back in the air shortly. While we are waiting, Captain Seth would like to invite you on a tour of the cockpit. Please leave your questions in the comments below if he misses anything you would like to know. We know you have a choice when you watch YouTube and we thank you for choosing Big Bus Aviation. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share our channel. Hey guys, I'm back. I thought I'd give you a little update about the plane. Uh, she is currently grounded. Uh, the last time that we checked in, if you saw that video, uh, we took off at night, or at least we tried to take off at night, and one of the, uh, one of the cylinders in the engine monitor uh, lit up. It went from yellow to red, and, and that was during taxi. So we went over to the run-up area, and it didn't go away. The problem got worse. It went all the way up to 600 plus degrees or something like that, 600 degrees Fahrenheit, which is insanely hot, uh, and, and definitely not something that could actually happen uh, just on taxi. And I knew that too because there's an analog instrument in the airplane in addition to the digital engine monitor. And that was telling me that everything was kind of, you know, it, it was it was copacetic. It, was, it wasn't overheating. Um, but nevertheless, there's no way that you take off when your engine monitor is telling you that there is potentially a huge problem, especially not at nine o'clock at night. Uh, so we aborted the mission and, and I called um, I called my, my AMP and, uh, and he is going to look at the, the plane. He is going to bore scope the cylinder just to make sure that there isn't anything necessarily wrong. Likely though, the issue is not mechanical. The issue is likely uh, just a probe, right? Those probes get old. So I thought I would take advantage of this um, downtime and answer a couple of questions that I have gotten about our airplane. Uh, the first question uh, is about the instrumentation, about the panel. So every time that you see Sharla and me flying, uh, you know, we have a camera that's on us, it's on the dogs, it's outside, you're looking at that prop spinning. I still haven't figured out how to get rid of the prop spinning there. Uh, but you don't actually get to see what's going on in the airplane. Right? You don't get to see what's going on with all the instrumentation. And there's some pretty interesting stuff regarding instrumentation because we basically gutted this thing and it has a glass cockpit in it. And so I'm going to show you that now. The other question that I get uh, a lot is, how do I fly with no hands? <laughs> and, and the answer to that is, uh, this airplane has an autopilot. Uh, we don't use it all the time, uh, but certainly uh, I, I do use it. And so I'm going to go over a little bit of that with you guys right now because those two things are related. So let's go inside the airplane and let's. So. Not an airplane built for a young man. So if we turn our master switch on and then let's grab some lights. Lights here. Hopefully you can see at least a little bit. What I really want to show you is the So these two instruments right here, this one and this one, this is what makes this a glass cockpit. Right? So if you're a pilot, if you've ever flown a plane, then you know you have a standard six pack, uh, which is comprised of the airspeed indicator, which is here, uh, an attitude indicator, which is here, a, an altimeter, which is here, a turn coordinator, which is here, a directional gyro, which is here, and a vertical speed indicator, which is here. These two instruments right here control all of that. So. This instrument here on the top has your airspeed. We're not moving right now, so it's not showing you anything. Uh, but trust me, it should be uh, in alignment with the uh, analog airspeed indicator here. Uh, it's got an altimeter, which is here. It's got a vertical speed indicator here, this thing that says VS. It's got uh, 
an attitude indicator, obviously, and a turn coordinator built in. Um, and down here, we have our replacement for the directional gyro. Uh, these instruments are called Adahar's instruments, so there's no vacuum system in this airplane anymore. It was completely removed. So this system is air data, attitude, direction, reference system. That's what Adahar's stands for. And that's what we have now instead of a vacuum system, so we don't have to worry about a vacuum system failing. In addition to that, this top instrument here has synthetic vision. So if we're flying along through the clouds, I can see everything that's out there. And in addition to that, we have moving map capability here. So we have a flat representation of everything that is out there. Pretty remarkable stuff. Uh, this is the stuff that you'd have in a cockpit of, uh, of, of any major airline, really. Uh, and it's all coupled with the... It's not on right now, but uh, we'll get it on in a second. Uh, all coupled with the, the GPS and, of course, all coupled with the radio stack. So the first radio, the second radio, and uh, the autopilot. And then down here, we have the replacement for the directional gyro. So that is now also an Adahar's instrument. And, and it allows us to have an HSI here. The really neat thing about this, and this gets back to the question that people ask, how do I fly with no hands? Well, if we go over here and we hit enter on this, enter on this, this is the GPS, the venerable Garmin 400. I think it was built in 1997, and it is a great GPS. It's coupled, this GPS here is coupled with the autopilot, which is here, and it's also coupled to this instrument here, which is a VOR, another VOR, and also a GPS. So what we do is, when we're flying, if we want to simply level the wings, then we just turn this thing on and the wings are automatically leveled. If we want to maintain a heading, then we press the heading on this KAP-150 autopilot. If we want to maintain altitude, we hit ALT and the altitude is maintained. This thing will literally take off, fly to your destination, and through operating the autopilot, I can shoot an approach all the way down to minimums, take it off the autopilot, and land it by hand. Pretty remarkable stuff. That's what all of this patient put into this aircraft now does. Now, here's another exciting thing. You see that right there, the thing that says 1200? Notice how the pressure altitude says 200 feet. Let me zoom in on that. If you are a pilot, if you have ever flown an IFR plan, you know that your transponder is what the uh, is what ATC is using to keep track of you, to keep track of your altitude. So what this thing does is it sends back an encoded altitude back to air traffic control, and they correlate that. They do some math, and then that should line up with this instrument here, your altimeter behind the transponder is something called a blind encoder and the blind encoder on this particular aircraft seems to be off it's off by about 200 feet which means that oftentimes I'll be flying along and I'll be say at 7,000 feet and ATC will come on and they'll say you're at 7,200 feet and I'll have to come back on it and say no sir my uh, transponder is sending you 7,200 but I'm actually at 7,000 well that problem is now fixed I got a great phone call today I ordered a Garmin GTX 345 uh, about six months ago, and because of the supply chain crisis, it has taken that long for the instrument to make its way back uh, to our avionics shop so that we can have, uh, have that instrument installed. But I got the call today, and the instrument is, is, is in, it's available. So the long and short of it is uh, the joys of aircraft ownership. Uh, we are going to have our AMP scope the cylinder and replace the, uh, the necessary probe and then this aircraft goes over to uh, the avionics shop and the new GTX uh, 
345 goes in uh, and she is ready to fly again. The other thing that the GTX 345 has is uh, ADS-B in, which means that we will be able to see all the traffic around us uh, on our uh, on our tablets that are on our keyboard, as opposed to the current means that we have right now, which is a Stratix device, which we put in the window and it goes to a dedicated tablet and it's nowhere near as sophisticated as what we're about to have. So, cool things on the horizon. Uh, we are also have this replaced. So do you see this doo-doo brown panel here? It's kind of dark in here, uh, but that is going to be replaced with a, uh, a, a CNC piece of metal that goes all the way through. So the CNC machine cuts out all of the holes for all the buttons and dials and lights and things like that that you see here. And, uh, and, and that goes in there, it's flush mount. Um, it's gonna have uh, charging ports for phones. It's gonna have a charging port, or rather a, a port, uh, and update my flight plans and things like that. So, cool things on the horizon here for 429070. And, uh, and as this stuff comes together, I will produce some videos and get in the air and show you all this stuff.